I'm not sure a podcast has been attempted with this many people. Uh, we'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm no, just but declaring I think himself a regular. Maybe I am in, the new shot. <laughs> in our next, uh, <laughs> does it make sense? In our next 100 episodes, we'll try to get better at working you guys in as one offs. Cheers to episode 100. Cheers. Wow, a little shy, guys. Water. Oh, tea. You guys could have cheers, man. Cheers. Hand soap. Oh, cheers. <laughs> Who's drinking like canned soap? For those... Alex, it's hand soap. <laughs> oh, sorry. My bad. Dawn, um, for those listening that are very confused by that, it's episode 100. We made it. Unfortunately, Evan is not with us on this episode. He is busy molding future Giannis and Dedekumbos of Tecumseh basketball right now and just couldn't make it work this week. Um, but he's still with us in spirit on this show because we had him do a homework assignment and write down his notes for the topic. So we will, Alex, you are in charge of remind, making sure we don't forget Evan's items. I will not. Okay. So today is Wednesday. December 7th is 7.25 p.m. Halftime of the Michigan State-Penn State game, which I'm sure will be hectic towards the end of this show when that game is winding down because I think it's tied at half. It is. And episode 100. We made it to episode 100. Woo! Which honestly doesn't even... I was doesn't feel back, real. No, I was driving back from work. I was like, damn, that's a lot of episodes. And also crazy that on this episode is the first one the three of us have not all been live for. Like, someone's been missing. Well, we all did that one podcast where we were recorded separately. We did that one, and that was that very... That was cheeks. Very uncomfortable listening to... uh, Because you guys sent me the raw audio files. Doing and I it listened, is, is awful. And was awful. You and, you and Evan were like, all right, topic one. Um, This is super weird. No one's here with me. <laughs> Just talk yeah, through them yourself. It's really and hard to Evan. talk to yourself. But besides that one... People have been here every single time. Um, we have a bunch of guests that will chime in here and there. Let's quickly, guys, let's do this. God damn it, Jason. Let's do this um, <laughs> very efficiently so people can try to follow along with voices. Um, unmute yourself one at a time and just say your name. I don't know how we yeah. pick them because they're in So uh, my name's Jason, number one fan of the pod. Uh, pretty much most of the questions you guys hear from this podcast podcast is from me. Uh, so you're welcome for the content. So Colby, to go, guys. Colby. <laughs> no, no government names, Colby. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it's memes here. <laughs> memes. Not doxing myself. This is Connor. This is Ryan, resident Buckeye. Yes, good perspective for this show. Drew, Drew. I think you're the one left. Drew. Yep, true. Alex's roommate. I think right. everybody on here has been talked about. At least has to, had to have been. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you probably know me as Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> well, yeah. we gave that. Away. Wait, there's another Ryan joining. Yeah, us. there's two Ryan in this. Oh, blast! No name. government names. No government names. <laughs> um, all right. Anyways, weekly check-ins. Alex, we'll start with you. Um. We last recorded on Wednesday, November 29th, if that helps anyone. Alex, what have you done since then? Oh, what did I do? Uh, last week, did nothing really exciting. Weekend. Friday, didn't do a whole lot. Um, Saturday, watched the soccer game. Um, then I watched the football games, just a load of buffet of football. Uh, Drew and I ate pizza. Exciting. That was exciting. Um, and then we went to the bar because we're degenerates and we drank and watched more football Saturday night. Sunday felt kind of hungover actually and did actually nothing. So I was a big piece of last week. That's what I learned. As bad as a uh, last Big Ten championship year? No. Over? God, no. No. That was, that's was that got to be the worst I've been in my entire life. 
I recorded that, that happen again. I think I recorded that show in my closet because I didn't want to leave my room. And I just sat in there. I oh, just, no. Because uh, we had people sleeping in the living room. That's why. Yeah. I missed like half of that podcast because I was in the bathroom. Hmm. Um, For me, nothing crazy. Shocking. The reason, the reason I'm drinking tea is because I've been sick pretty much the whole week. Had the suds. Straight out of SpongeBob. It's not been fun. I think I'm going to be over them soon. My problem was I procrastinated getting NyQuil, which is usually my go-to when I'm sick. I find that if you take the daytime medicine, that's okay. But if you don't have the nighttime medicine to knock you out at night, you don't wake up feeling very good. So once I got on the NyQuil, ponied up and got it from CVS, I felt better the last two days. And I'm getting back. Who's doing Who's just unmuted themselves? Um, also, it's Grant... Good. You gotta get the liquid stuff. You can't can't be doing the pills. Agreed. The gel caplets. They don't Agreed. do the same. That's how I know we're friends. I only go liquid. I don't trust pills. I don't think they work. Yeah. They they don't. They're placebos. We got, we got any pill guys down there? Connor? You can see my I'm head. a huge liquid NyQuil guy. <laughs> yeah. No pills do not work. You have 100%. to be able to feel the medicine. <laughs> yeah, you, if it doesn't burn your throat, I'll just leave that one out there that it's not working. Actually, a funny story about NyQuil. Back in high school, I took NyQuil one night, and I woke up in a different section of my house. I sleptwalked to my sister's room when she wasn't there and just woke up on the bed. So, yeah, um, NyQuil does work. Pills do not. <laughs> uh, one listener, uh, his mom accidentally gave him NyQuil before a full day of school at Tecumseh High School, and he had trouble staying awake during the day, to say the least. So be careful with NyQuil. It's no joke. The thing will knock you out in like 20 minutes. You just can't put on blast like that, dude. What do you mean? It's not on blast. You just accidentally took the wrong doses. It was hilarious. It's really funny. Um, did anyone else? We'll start with Drew. Did anyone else have like one nugget from their weekend that's worth sharing? If you don't, totally fine. You guys know if you listen, I don't really have anything each week. But since Drew, you were with Alex, maybe how was the pizza? How was O'Toole's? Pizza was good. O'Toole's was was fun. We made up a, a drinking game to drink every time Purdue got uh, first down. Nice. Um, drank more than I thought we would, actually. Um, but other than that, Alex covered my weekend. My weekend was the same. Very nice. nice. Anyone, anyone else have anything crazy? Uh, yeah. Jason? Oh. oh, you can go. Oh, my bad, Connor. Uh, won the intramural basketball championship. Oh, yeah. That's Big huge. Win. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, I've got impressive. a t-shirt and money back. So, you guys wow. ever hear the story of Grant's intramural legend game? No. Game winning shot. No, so. please tell me, Alex. It's on video, actually. Yeah. Right. You should send that video in the chat. Maybe there'll be a tweet. Yeah, it should be. I have to go hunt that down on BU Intramural's Instagram page like three years three years. Was that in the now. final? Semi-final? Oh, quarter-final would get us to the semis. Yeah. Cool enough, though. It's like our toughest team we faced until the At the final, buzzer. Though. Cormac, was your, guy, was your final at like a big arena or is it the same um, normal gym? Uh, we had this. We didn't get to play on like the main court or anything. We got stuck with like the shitty Intramural gym. Uh, Not even wood floors, like the rubber floors. Those ew. Pop. Yeah. But GV. You no, know, gritty wind pulled out the bomb ball. organization. We, yeah. we got dusted by like 40. The, that team I was on that made it, but playing at Hinkle, like on Hinkle's floor, was pretty sweet. We lost by like 40. Yeah. It was like the whole club basketball team when you're only supposed to have, a, you're only supposed to be allowed to have two club basketball people on an IU or intramural team, and they had like five. And no one checked them. And we I didn't just know got club it. basketball was a thing. I don't think there's a club basketball team at MSU. There's got to be, right? No. There's a club football team. Mm. Like full pads. And they like practice. There's a guy who was, when I was there, a guy on Butler's club basketball team made the real team as a walk-on because we had so many injuries. It was quite the story around campus. It's like, oh, that club basketball guy is now like on the actual team. Three-pointer. Yeah, we're losing by one. I'm at 18-10 in the game. Yes, Ryan, there is a lacrosse team in MSU. I'm at oh. 18. Good, the chat. 15. The chat. That's on a good... Dot. Ryan, great idea. If anyone has anything to say as well in the chat, it's a great idea. Um, All right. Now let's move into sports. To start it, 
again, this feels like it was forever ago, but the United States knocked out of the World Cup to the Netherlands. Wait. Not- Sorry. Evan's note section. I just was perusing it. Thanks, Alex. Uh, he just wants to congratulate us on 100 episodes, and he wants to thank everyone that listens and interacts with us. Basketball season has started for him. That's how his week is going. Yes. Molding the next generation. So that means he's thanking practice. he's thanking even the Michigan fans, the part of the blue wall that interacts with us on Twitter. That I don't think he meant that when he typed that out. Now that you said that out loud, yeah. Yeah, we'll caveat that for, I don't think he meant it like that. I think he meant thank you for some people that interact with us on social media. Yes. Um America. We lost to the Netherlands. I don't know how you guys felt. It was kind of in some ways, I thought the United States actually played pretty well because like we held the ball a long time. Now, I know Netherlands is supposed to be a counterattacking team, but it was very evident once Netherlands ever touched the ball, they looked so much better with it, moving it down the pitch than we could try. And we we, we need a striker really bad. Yeah. You know who else doesn't have a striker and just lost? Spain. Mm. So you can be good without a striker. We're just not good enough. That's why it's still football and not soccer. Still football, for sure. I don't know if I really had anything else from the World Cup. You guys have been watching it way more than I have. I have. I've only watched America's game. I can't honest. catch in, uh, catch up with all the during the day stuff. But um, the memes account seems to be all over that, as well as cheese. So, do you guys have any thoughts on the World Cup? I just root for good games every game. Not really rooting for anybody. I yeah, want to go to PKs every single game. Chaos. I want chaos every game. Well, stat check for you guys. Um, uh, EKs right now are sixty-one percent success rate. If we were wondering, look that up today. That's you know, that seems kind of low. Very low. I feel like the I've never seen Harry Kane miss a PK. It's seventy-six percent. So a little low this year. Mm, the butts are puckering a little bit. It must be. All right, that was the World Cup. Um, our first topic to lead the show. You might think it's. Big Ten football? No, it is Lions football because as we know in our country, the NFL is king and our Lions, not Connors Packers, are really flirting with the NFL playoffs at this point in the season. Five and seven, you might not think it, but I believe they've won five of their last six, playing really good football, um, dismantled the Jaguars. Stunning. You don't really see scores like that in the NFL and you really don't see that scores like that from the Lions when they're on the winning side. That's like what the Eagles did to us last year when we were in fourth field. Um, but it was really cool just to like watch it. I went back and watched most of it on replay, fast forwarding through. Alex, your opening thoughts on the Detroit Lions performance against the Jaguars? Uh, it's like the first time in several years where I watched a Lions game and never, that was never in doubt. Just led the whole game. It was never close. Never was worried. I was like, "Wow, this is this is a new feeling. Not something I'm used to with the Lions." Yeah, my my main takeaways were mainly on offense, just because that's what you remember when you watch highlights with all our brains. Amonra, I think he's almost unguardable at this point. I know it's the Jaguars' defense, but the way that Ben Johnson uses him and the way that he runs routes and is tough, I don't know how you really like stop Amonra. Like you can maybe limit him a little bit, but he's basically going to get his. Yeah, you can't stop him. Amonra is him certified. He was just blasting TV in the background. <laughs> that was like the that was going to commercial song. I could definitely tell. <laughs> But I agree with you, Jason. Point stands. Amon is unguardable. Um, DJ Chark, revenge game. Huge. I don't know how we missed that one in our preview for last week, Alex. That's probably my fault because I'm a DJ Chark We were Chark rushing. We were rushing through Lions Jags. But we should have known he was not healthy, gets healthy against his old team, balled out, made really tough catches down the sidelines. Jared made some nice throws to him, though, so don't don't forget about that. Jared played really well. Um, he makes another question that we get to in a second tougher. Um, DeAndre Swift had some juice. Maybe he's fully healthy. He looked pretty good. Didn't look as scared as he has looked in the past few weeks. He looked more normal. Nasty stiff arm on the goal line um, on his touchdown run that I think we all remember. That was disgusting. And then defensively would just be, and credit to Brad Holmes, Justin Houston, 
continued again after his two set game. I don't know about you guys. I'm sure everyone here has seen that clip of his like the skip to my duck under the skip to my Lou rush where he like splits his legs and then ducks under. That's disgusting to even try that in a football game. I can't believe he like got off of got off of a um snap. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna like hesitate it worked. And, and run underneath the guy. He has so, the second most sacks among NFL rookies. And he's played two games. Yeah. So we have the top two in the league, yes. which is pretty nasty. Um yes, Connor. Okay, so as a as you know, somebody who's not a Lions fan. Right. Um, I'm very interested in how you guys like you guys are five and seven sniffing around a playoff spot. Really, you haven't had any expectations like the last decade or so. Maybe a few expectations going in, that, but now that you guys are on the up, <laughs> on the upward spiral, you know what's a succeeding season next year? And is it a failure if you don't make the playoffs next year? Next year, this I mean, this year I mean, unless you went out, if you went out, there's still a possibility. Four and one, I've I done the math. You would get in. Get yeah, four and one. You can get in at four and one. Or whatever, you can lose once, but we get your well, point. <clears throat> you'd have to get in over Seattle, and they have the tiebreaker because there's not going to be four teams from the NFC beast getting in. So, I mean, looking forward to next year, if you don't playoffs. make the playoffs, is it a failure? And is Dan Campbell is his head on a, on the hot seat? No, it, not on no. the hot seat. But I need them to make the playoffs. It so, should be playoffs or bust. If you don't year. make the playoffs next, if let's say you go seven and ten. Yeah, I'd be really disappointed. Byron? Um, and Dan would be on the hot seat. It'd be warm, but I'm not sure we'd be at fire him because he's really turned it around. I I don't know if anybody remembers the Matt Patricia era, but that was pretty <laughs> shitty. I blocked it out. <laughs> but also, can Lions really win one score games? Yes, can they win tight games. When Aaron well, Rodgers isn't throwing three gift gift me interceptions in the end. Aaron Rodgers is retiring. Wow, uh, breaking! I'd be perfectly okay with that, um, <laughs> as long as the ninety-nine million dollar dead cap doesn't hit. But he's not retiring because he wants that money, and he's he's in love with himself, so he needs that money. But I would love to see Packers fan the is alive, turning on Aaron Rodgers. This is absolutely wild. let Jordan Love ride the rest of the year. There's no shot at the playoffs. Oh my god! No, okay. I agree. The Packers are dead. Right. We need Will Levis. Will Levis. Skull. Good point. Jason, um, well, Connor, you said seven and ten. What do we f- tell me? What our record is? If we finish five and twelve this year, I'll be a little disappointed because we've been playing so well. But as long as we keep making incremental progress, I'm not going to get mad at Dan. All I said earlier in the year when we were one and six, if we did not improve from last year, I'd be pretty upset and think about it. But now we've already surpassed that tenfold, so he's good for next year. Just has to keep getting better. No, I'm saying next, like. Obviously, he has his job for next year. I'm saying for the year after, if they don't make the playoffs next year. I don't think it's playoffs or fired. I think it's like, if, they, if they're if they terrible, then then maybe think about it. If they're competing for a playoff spot down the stretch, I'm not going to be mad. One more win than he had the year before. Just keep incrementally getting better. We have This fan base has a lot of patience, so we can wait as long as we need, as long as you just keep inching up. I also think if we come one game out of a playoff spot this year, and then next year, don't make the playoffs. People would be upset unless it was like we finished nine and eight. Don't make the playoffs, and then next year, like go nine and eight again. Don't make the playoffs. I don't think that's bad, but yeah, I agree. The solution. Wop. It's funny watching you guys react to this game because everyone's at like different points. So I yeah, think I'm Jason, so far behind Jason. I, Jason's, I think Jason's way ahead. far as ahead because I think I was like, did they make two threes or just one? <laughs> Are you on cable? Yeah, I can't yeah, watch it. I'm on room. cable. I'm on cable. So if you guys are you streaming, boss, you're probably baby. quite a bit behind me. I'm trying I'll, to load up I'll in my room, room, but uh, the Hulu Live subscription seems to have not gone through. So my mom needs to pay that. So I can't watch it. <laughs> wow. chop, live chop. Chop, chop Hulu Live. Um, What's up, mommy? <laughs> um, what were the other points I had? Oh, we did have one target for JMO. Which uh that was just a decoy move. No, when I watched back, he beat his guy. He just needs to know he's he was still out of bounds yes. by three yards. Yes. He it's the first time on a football field in a live game in a while. He forgot where out of bounds was. But he beat his guy. He's faster than anyone around him. That we confirm that. He just was yeah. out of bounds. And he really was gonna play gunner, but um we didn't punt. Which is I don't, I don't know how I, I still don't know how I feel about 
I actually played him out there at Gunner just to get him acclimated. That seems like a crazy person move. Um, yeah, I agree. Speaking of special teams, I always great segue. Segway, great podcasting. Uh, I think we found our kicker, and he's got a cool nickname. His name is Money Badge Yo. Money Badge Yo. I did not hear about that. <laughs> yep. I saw someone post that. with. I think the team did, actually, on the Instagram caption. said Money Badge Yo. And I, Why not just the Money Badger? Well, you know, it's a, play on the Honey Badger. Yeah, that, people were calling him that, too. But I think when you have a kicker, and they have a cool nickname like that, I think we have found our kicker for the future. I believe he's missed once this year. Colby's nodding 100% yes. He's all in on Money Badge Yo. I was going to bring it up, but you brought it up first. Did we have Fat Randy at one point? That was a pretty cool. Yeah, well, Fat Randy might have been the best kicker, kicker we've ever had, but. <laughs> well, we had Matt Prater. I don't know if that's Jason a good Hansen. nickname. Hanson didn't have a nickname. That's true. And he was just a but weapon. He was good. A weapon. I think he scored the most points in Lions history. Jason Hanson? Jason yeah. Hanson? Yeah. He's a league rant. He, uh, he's number two all time <laughs> in sports in general. People forget that about that kickers. Like fact he's guy, rack Ryan. Of points. Yeah. Ryan has been fat guy. What did Jamal Williams has more points than like half the league of kickers. So also fun fact. And I think like the Broncos like touchdowns. I think he has the same amount of touchdowns, if not more. He has more. He has more touchdowns than the Broncos. That's crazy. Um, Evans points for the Lions. I got I don't really one. think the last point is relevant. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Domin- domination, capital D, over the Jags. Scored or capitalized off Jags miscues and turnovers, which is true. When I was watching this game back, I thought it was just going to be a Lions bloodbath. We actually did make some mistakes, but the Jags made even more. Like Zay Jones, who's on my fantasy team. Oh my God, Zay Jones sucked. Oh my God. He dropped every ball towards him. <laughs> I'm going to start him this week because I think I have to. I'm so nervous that he just forgot how to catch a football after what I saw watching the game back. He couldn't catch a football. He was hot garbage. Yeah, he was terrible. Uh, he almost ruined my fantasy weekend. Luckily, he didn't. I was able to secure the victory over uh, Ryan. And I'm still uh, sniffing around the playoffs just like the Lions are. Fantasy this Good job, Jason. Thank Congrats, you, man. Should we spend a second on that? Because it's been said a few times, and Evan wrote it too, um, sniffing around. So it's always been in the hunt, but Monday Night Football did sniffing around like they tried to reinvent the graphic. I don't know if I, I like that. I thought that was a wild graphic. It was Troy I thought that was wild. wanted something new. He wanted something new from just in the hunt, so they made the transition. To sniffing around. Sniffing. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of gross. I'm out on that. That's kind of lame. Yeah, I'm it's like a... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. Like, Troy Aikman thinks he's bigger than in the hunt. Oh, I guess respect it. Um, Evan said golf was efficient, of course, and his theory of indoor golf is still alive. <laughs> no, Jared don't like put that. together two good outdoor performances. This is we're we're to the point where Jared's just good everywhere. He's efficient everywhere, not good, efficient everywhere. Hmm, I like that. Efficient everywhere. And when he goes to Lambo in December. Um, then we'll really know how efficient he can be outdoors. He can store in love. Yeah. Um, our listener question, we can get the guy's thoughts on. I do have one question in this question that I'd like everyone to answer. It's a quick one. Um, is it better for Detroit to try for a playoff run or start tanking? Now, Evan says you have to pick one. You can't really play a middle ground at this point where we're at. You've got to pick playoffs or tank. He says we are sniffing around. So next draft needs to add depth and value to our roster. Won't get a top five pick next year with one of our picks this year. I'm not really sure what he meant by that. I think he's saying based on how we're playing, we're not going to get a top five pick, and he just made a grammar mistake. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Um, I'm always about winning. I'm just going to win football games, so I can't imagine anyone in this Zoom right now wants the team to tank from here on out. I think we're like committed to winning. I think that's an absurd question. Answer. Yeah. Agreed. Absurd teams. question. Also, since Rams are so bad, you got their pick. Yeah. Baker Mayfield's trying to destroy your draft position. Well, so. he'll destroy his team's chances of winning because he's garbage. Better than John Wolford and Bryce Perkins. I mean, they can be interesting. They're in garbage. Two or three games. Uh, we needed why I'm here. Pick. Who thinks Baker is better than Patrick Mahomes? Yeah. Garbage. Does not know anything about NFL quarterbacks. And I hope he mentions that in the group chat tomorrow. 
Ryan, thoughts on Baker Mayfield? You might have some bad things to say based on his flag planting shenanigans at the horseshoe back in the day. <laughs> no, but I saw this earlier. Noah Brown, Dallas Cowboy. Remember that one hand behind the behind the back catch he had against Oklahoma in 2016? That was sweet. Ryan, what are all these facts, dude? What <laughs> the only thing when You're you say no that guy? The only thing I know about C- Noah Brown is that if you have CD Lamb on fantasy, you watch every Dallas Cowboys game so confused because they are the same exact person. What looks they alike. Look the same. And you're like, oh, CD caught it. Nope, it's Noah Brown. Nobody starts Noah Brown unless they're in like a six. Wait, so they both game. went. Did Noah Brown go to Ohio State? Yes. Oh, that's why he, he knew that. Beat them. Say so why else did you know that? <laughs> Um, so then the follow up to that question was, would you rather take a QB this year or try for Caleb Williams next year? Alex, what do you think about that? Bryce Young. I want him. If you can get him, you take him this year. Yeah. I, yeah. Yes. I don't want to keep punting it forever. Where have you, you're not, you're not going to be a top five pick next year. You're not going to have the opportunity to take Caleb Williams. Where have you gotten on golf though? Because golf keeps playing well. I still oh, want to like QB, Jared. But Jared's keeps... a great guy. He, Jared's not that old. He's he's been pretty good. He gets to play in a dome half the year. So Evans indoor theory means he just has to win like half of his road games to be a playoff team because he'll be a lead at home. That's part of the reason I'm still in on CJ Stroud for us because of the dome factor. Mm, good point. But Bryce Young, if he's available, I would I would still want him. It's a tantalizing talent. Is anyone else a little down? Oh, Cormac, Lamar Jackson would be sick. Yes, I would take yes, Lamar over would take anyone Lamar. we've listed. I'm a, I am don't know how anyone else feels. Maybe they like the dog in him or competitor. I did not like Caleb Williams' fingernail polish stunt. I don't know if I love that guy as my franchise. Drew, TV. please give your thoughts. Does Drew and I like talked it? about this. No. No, I've, not, I've never liked it. I hated it back in Oklahoma as well. I just I think it's a bad look. Anytime you yeah. paint your fingernails as a football player, I'm just questioning a lot of things. It's, yeah. it's mean to say that, but I really am. Man card. <laughs> just, I don't know. This is some loser behavior. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Cormac. Agree with that. You sound like Nick Adams, Alex. Who's Nick Adams? We I don't, don't know who that is. We don't need to go into that. It's like a satire Twitter account. Thanks, uh, Connor. It's weird. No, no, Ryan, we're not out on Drake, maybe, but he's pretty young. He's a freshman. In college. He's a freshman this year? Yes. He looks like Grayson Allen. I might be out on him. You love Grayson Allen. I like you love him. He played in college. You basketball. love him. I like the role that he played. He's your favorite player of all time. Him and Tyler Hansbro. Grant's favorite players. Is he actually related to Luke May? Yeah, they're brothers. That makes a lot of sense. They actually do they look, look similar. The exact same. Yeah, no, they both right. went to North Carolina. Yeah, you know. Remember when? Remember when North Carolina athletics tweeted out that Luke May went to class the day after his shot because of their athletic scandal or academic scandal they had like the year before to act like they were a good school. That was a classic PR move by them. Very well done. Wow, we really got off the rails. Thanks, thanks, Ryan, for the Drake May comment. Um, Vikings preview. We'll do that. Skull. 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 It's a huge game. I believe lines are two and a half. That's the talk the whole week. They're favored at home. Against favored. 10 and 2 team, which is crazy. I'm not going to say I disagree with it. It's a little crazy. It's a little disrespectful. Um, But the first matchup was very close down to the wire. Dan Campbell might have managed one of the worst games that he's ever managed. Um, The over-under is 52 and a half. Feels like there's going to be a lot of points in this one. Alex, initial thoughts on this game where the division is on the line. The Vikings win or tie their North champions. That's a that's a respect factor that Dan Campbell has to be telling the team going into this week. It was the same last week as well. The Lions lost, the Vikings would have clinched. Yeah, but you're not playing them. This is different. Um, You should have beat them the first time. He had a million blunders. Um, however, I'm more nervous for this game because... Justin Jefferson did nothing in the first game, and there's just no way that Jeff Okuda steps up like he did last time, because I'm still an Okuda hater, somewhat. I thought we brought you back. Yeah, somewhat. I think he's a good player, nothing spectacular, but I'm very worried that 
Justin Jefferson is going to get his in this game. And then we're going to be screwed. Because if we get in a track meet, I don't love our odds. Yeah. It's crazy how good our defense has been playing as of late. Oh, yeah. I just don't know how that's going to continue. As one of the biggest Jeff Okuda guys probably on the planet, I do agree with you where I don't know how we could... I don't, you can't stop Justin Jefferson twice. You really no, can't. No so way. he's going to get his... It feels like Hawk's going to score a touchdown in this game. I can already Hope visualize so. that. Like That's all fancy purposes, you traitor. Um, that's for sure happening. If they can stop the run and force them to pass, they'll have a good chance. I think they're going to be able to move the ball. But this Vikings defense is all about bend, don't break. That is their core philosophy. They gave up like 400 yards to Mike White, but like only gave up one touchdown. So this might be a money bad geo game. Um, but if you can capitalize in the red zone where the Lions have actually been really good, it'll be a game. Ford Field's going to be rocky. We know that. There's going to be a home field advantage to this game. I don't really know um, what I'm feeling overall, though. The Patriots and Matt Patricia lit up the Vikings defense. I think the Lions have a great chance to move the ball. Do we think points. do we think JMO has a real shot to be a anytime scorer touchdown this game? Like, do we think they're going to get one for him? No, no, I don't. I think they're too scared to play him. They're, I mean, they're trying to take this as slow as possible. And I'll be honest, Gray. I know you talk about his body language and his weird tweets all the time. The end of last game, I, I was like looking at him on the sideline. He did look like he hated his life and that he did not want to be here. Really? Yeah. But I mean, it didn't help. He had that one of those like ski mask looking things on under his helmet. Yeah, he dressed like he was outdoors at Lambeau. Yeah, <laughs> he just likes to dress warm. I, I respect that. Um, I don't like that. That is that what you saw? I was hoping that you're going to say he looked very excited to be around his teammates. Maybe he, just he did um, in the beginning of the game, and then when he didn't do anything or play, he looked not as thrilled. I get that, which I is normal. He, I think he just wants to ball out. Does anyone in the in the group have any major key to this game, or do they not feel really decisively about one way or any bold predictions for this game? I mean, we can score a lot of points, but I also just like wouldn't be surprised if we lost by two touchdowns. It's lines. I don't know. I'm not leaning one way or another. Just I, I don't know. The Vikings. Can we win by, by two touchdowns? Teams. No, I think we can lose by two touchdowns, or we'll like win by a field goal. That feels right. I agree with Colby on that. So no blowout possibilities. On I don't think by so. two. I, yeah, I don't think you blow out the Jaguars and then blow out a ten and two team the week after if you're the Detroit Lions. We're, yeah, we're no. five and seven for a reason. After all, we're playing really good football. But I'm so going to go a new era of Detroit Lions football. Brand new Lions BNL. Yep. What they're saying. Yep. I will go. Vikings twenty six Lions twenty three. I'm going to keep drinking the Kool Aid. I've predicted the lot Lions every week for like six weeks. So I'm just going to keep it up. Um. Lions 31, Vikings 27. That's a lot of points. 54 well, points. We scored over 37 times this year. Anyone Somebody else? else? I think no one 33 else 30 Lions. Nice. Who led? 17 10, 10 Vikings. Wow. 17 10. Who said 34 21 Lions? Oh, wow. big Kool Aid. Yeah. <laughs> We already know. I don't, Evan didn't put down his pick, but we know it's the Vikings. Yeah, he hasn't picked the Lions. He hasn't picked the Lions. At this <laughs> I'll, pick, hey, I'll pick for Evan. 35-24 Vikings, Justin Jefferson, like three touchdowns all over yep. Jeff Okuda. Holy shit, Evan's back on the podcast. <laughs> no, Evan wouldn't say that about Jeff Okuda. That yeah, was, that was too Jeff. far. Um, All right. We're going to move into college football, Michigan football, Big Ten. We're going to go just, I know there's a, we got a, we got a rabid fan base. We're going to have some good banter back and forth. We're going to go Purdue game, then Mozzie Smith, then Blake Corum injury, then people transferring to Iowa, and we're going to mix in the listener questions. And then we'll do college football playoff, then anything Michigan State football portal season, then hoops, Nothing. and then we'll be, we'll be done for the show. So that's the order. We're going to start with the Purdue game. Um, Alex, kick it to you. Has I been doing on the topics? Anything for Michigan Purdue? Um, you know, classic Michigan first half, close game, didn't look very good. Came out in second half, did the same thing they've done all year. 
it's just a lame story watching them. Just you can predict their games easily before you watch them. Just a waste of time. Just, just it was gross. As a Michigan State fan, it's just gross to watch them in the we Big did. Ten Championship two years in a row play absolutely terrible opponents. And we faced Russell Wilson, Ohio State undefeated team, and an undefeated Iowa team. It's just like, well, you know, there's a lot of little Mickey going on for this Michigan football team once they get to Indy. A lot of little Mickey. Reach. I don't really think it's their fault, though. I mean, it's not. It's just, it's not fair. For all unfair. intents Life's and purposes, their Big Ten championship game was November 26th at the Horseshoe. That was the Big Ten championship. Mm-hmm. And then cool. it's a formality. Not to disrespect Purdue. You got, I love Charlie Jones. Love him. And he, Elite. he balled. Elite. And that's, that goes into Evan's point. He said it was a Charlie Jones show in the first half. And then the run game for Michigan dominated the second half, which I think is fair. I don't know if there was anything crazy I had to take away that's been, hasn't been said about this team already. Donovan Edwards, again, just, hat tip to him for continuing to battle through that hand injury and just I don't he's got more talent than Blake Corum I don't they're different runners like they're a different style of running back but he's really stepped up when they've needed it and JJ his stat line always breaks my brain because you will box score watch and then it's like this guy stunk and didn't do anything and then you watch his plays and the plays that he makes that are good are like NFL caliber plays that you need to win a title in college football he did have a bad blunder where he threw a horrendous interception. So he's going to have to get that really out of the system. That was a classic like heat check, like where you're like in basketball when you make two sick completions and then you try something crazy from half court and he threw an interception. But I mean, some of his throws, like the, the one to Ronnie Bell in the end zone was a very high level throw. So it shows why they had to move on from Cade when they did. Um, he's yeah. definitely better than Cade. Kind of just the credit to the offensive line in the trenches again. Really. I mean. And it'll carry you a long way. You win in the trenches. They played a pretty good. Um... Yes, Ryan, we will get to that. We did. I will say they played a. <laughs> they played a bend don't break. Yes. A bend don't break style in this game. Where Purdue had a lot of offensive yards. They just collapsed them into kicking field goals and Jeff Brom oh, was I've never seen a coach more eager to kick field goals down like 16 points in a football game and that guy he was just like, kept yeah. kicking him he's never gonna go for it <laughs> going for the backdoor cover and then the Wolverine score at the very end to backdoor cover the cover it was an Which all-time was disgusting all-time gambling beat for whoever was betting on that game um but yeah it was a pretty whole home pretty whole home big time championship I guess it's crazy it kind of set in like it's weird like when you win those big games I'm sure you guys felt this at some point, like when Michigan State went to Ohio State, won that year. I guess the game with Iowa was very close. Obviously, it was the drive, like seven minutes with LJ Scott. Um, But even if like the Big Ten Championship game isn't that, maybe Ryan will know more. Even if the Big Ten Championship game isn't that close of a game, when the confetti comes down as a fan, you still like step back and where it's like, wow, they actually accomplished this and it's setting in, even though like the highest of moment was against Ohio State. It still feels really good to watch the whole ceremony and then realize the team made it this far. And in this specific case, that they were able to do it back to back because I mean, any team, we've seen teams throughout history get a fluky season, but the, the fact they were able to go through all the offseason changes, have a quarterback battle, and then still win was like that was when I kind of sunk in more how cool it is. But then as you get the talk from everyone, and I think how the fan base feels is it's not even remotely like a success yet. You have to beat TCU. We're like, this will all come crumbling down if you lose to TCU. So I'm that's we're TCU. fully in on that. A loss is a failure. Crumble. Crumble. Like, embarrassing if you lose to TCU. And I respect TCU a lot. Embarrassing. Wow. Yeah, I think so. I think everyone in the nation wow. probably feels that, except for TCU. They're, they should. They should go one thing and they got a Heisman. I mean, Michigan's a bigger favorite over TCU than Ohio, uh, than George is over Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and George is unbeatable by most people's eyes. What's the spread in the Ohio State game? Six seven. Michigan's seven. seven and a half now. Really? Oh, Michigan's moving Dropping. down. Wow. Maybe some breaking news. Mozzie Smith arrested. Some, uh, some rumor mill. I'm going to get on the message boards. Jason, I actually thought that was serious when you put in the chat. I had a heart attack. I went right to Twitter list to see if that was real. I was like, oh, God. Um, it should have been. Uh, we got Evans points. We got that. Okay, this is about 
this is about the game. Some people are saying, we'll talk about Blake Corum first and Mozzie. Blake Corum we injury. Talk about Blake Corum for because the, he's it, out. Yeah, it came out Thursday, we, which feels we already so long knew ago. that. No, we didn't know that he was going to be season ending until that news came out by Rappaport. So Ian Rappaport got in the, the college football that scoop was the, business last week. Wow. Yeah, that, like that a was a month ago. The day I know the day after we recorded that all came out. Um, really, it, I think it hurts the most against like beating Georgia. I think they can beat TCU with Donovan Edwards and everyone, but I think you really need a guy like Blake Corum to get like the gritty three to four yard carries like consistent throughout a game. Um, and it also just makes your depth so sketchy. Like if Donovan Edwards gets hurt whatsoever, they're cooked. When it comes to the running back room, you're going to trot out um, that linebacker. Yeah, Khalil Mullins and CJ Stokes. He so, got like, some more some more touches, or he was at least in the backfield on some plays. The only spin zone you can say positive, I guess, is like is if Edwards stays healthy, he's probably a more explosive back that can crib crib plays than Corum is. I think that's pretty safe to say based on breakaway speed and being a five star. But Corum means a lot to the team, so it hurts. But maybe they'll play for him. Maybe they'll use it as better pass position. catcher, Donovan Edwards. Yeah, especially if he has the cast off. Better um, running back. People are saying anybody would win the Heisman uh, playing running back for Michigan. That's what the question is about. Saying is Blake Corum extremely overrated in a system RB? How does Grant feel about this narrative? I who is this an actual narrative? I don't know. Or is this like it was a, a listener question? Narrative? It was a listener question, so I was gonna I'll give it the light of day. I don't. It was my question. <laughs> Stand up. I think that second half of the Illinois game showed that he's not a system RB. Uh, I think it's safe to say him and Diamond Edwards are extremely talented. And when the team had to adapt with CJ Stokes and Isaiah Gash playing behind that good offensive line, they got like 10 yards in the second half against Illinois. So I think that game did him favors. Um, I think it just speaks more volumes to Diamond Edwards and how good he is that it doesn't really feel like they're skipping a beat. But, Blake Corm is a very good college running back. And it's crazy. He actually could have won the Heisman. Like, no joke, if he had stayed healthy, based on how, like, the weekend evolved with Williams losing, Duggan losing. I mean, Stetson, Betts, Stetson Bennett's a finalist. That's really, like... That's a joke. You all be. you need to know about the award. Like, Corm actually would have had a legitimate chance to win, which is makes me feel even worse for the kid, but um, I'm sure he'll go on to do fine things. Bad take, happen. Connor. What is speak? Blake Cora being able to win the Heisman. I think that's absolute horse crap. Connor, There's you no know though. To running back. I mean, he would have had those two Donovan Edwards probably long run touchdowns. Donovan Edwards might be more yes, talented than Blake Corum Simply, I mean, it's a quarterback well, award. Unless you're breaking records like Devontae Smith, and well, Stets, I'd rather have Corum in there than Stetson Bennett. I mean, that's just pathetic because Bryce Young even had been better numbers than Stetson Bennett in that category. Yeah. Person There's a lot of people that should have been over. Um, also, why was there only four? I thought, what well, wasn't? Can't they invite like five to six? Last yeah, year they change five? it every year. It's their choice. Sometimes they have three. It's just whoever. They... That's wild. Um. Oh, now you know what it feels like to get snubbed, Grant. Um. And Connor, if, if, if we're going to get into the blue wall talk, you know it's a little different if a Michigan running back's there. Like if you guys believe in that media hype, they'd be like, "Yeah, let's let this kid win." I mean, Hutchinson got there last year. I agree with the bias, which was yeah, a joke. I mean, yeah. If K nine was in a Michigan uniform. The, uh, last year, he probably would have won the thing easily. Oh, we would have won a natty if we had K9 on our team. It would have been a runaway. I don't think they would have lost a game. No, yeah, that's probably true. He's that Georgia good. still. Georgia's just that much bigger, I don't think. Oh, I think he would have put in a Kenneth is Dean. that good. Kenneth is that good. Jordan Davis, Nicobe Dean would have jumped on Kenneth's back and he would have ran him in the end zone. <laughs> yeah, Kenneth's a freak. What could have been? Um, all right. Now, the juicy stuff. We, got a, we had a felony in between now. And then, start with the number Disgusting one question. Disgusting act. But Jason, should Jim Harbaugh be fired because of Mozzie Smith? Absolutely. How the hell are you going to come out after the Michigan State situation and say all those kids need to be criminally prosecuted and then just throw this shit under the rug? Like, who does that? A great point. Punching or a felony gun charge? What's worse? What's worse, Grant? How are you going to spin on the, spins on this? I don't think he is. Well, the good thing for you, and Alex knows me, I have a unique situation where I am a pretty oh, diehard Michigan football fan, oh, but without, I never went to the school. So I don't buy into the whole like leaders and best, like they're above anyone. 
my big soapbox thing was I think for the fan base and I think for everyone in college sports is you have to realize there's levels of scumbaggery to every single college program ever. And as long as everyone's like, all right, we're all going to do scumbaggery things in the pursuit of winning a title, then we can kind of cut through the BS of like, oh, we do things the right way. I mean, even to use my own school, Butler as an example, who has the Butler way, supposed to be bigger than, you know, doing anything bad. They waited until like April to fire Laval Jordan to save $1 million on his contract. Kind of a scummy thing to do. The, so like every single school has has done something stupid at some point. So one, I'd start with that. Two, I think this rivalry has gotten to the point of like politics where it's like Democrat Republican, where everyone is just so blinded by their side. And I think if you know, Jim Harbaugh operates as like a politician of sorts, that's why he can justify to himself. I'm not defending his actions by any means. There's a ton of layers to the story. I do think like I've been trying to separate the two between the tunnel and like what Mozzie Smith did. It just makes it more of a firestorm that they happened in the same year. And Alex knows me. One of my biggest things is I hate hypocrites. So do I wish he wouldn't have been as like mean or, or I guess quick, decisive, like these guys need to be booked. Yes. I wish he did not do that, especially knowing what he knew. I wish he just would have said, Hey, I'm not going to speak on it. It's a police investigation. Let's let the law take out. I said in our one group chat that if I was an athletic director for Michigan, I think that no brainer, the most no brainer move. If that happens the morning before you fly to Indiana is you just suspend them for the Indiana game and you move on. I don't think anyone really would have bad an eye. I think they would be like, oh, that's bad that he has that. But you, as long as you do like a one game and then the charges end up getting talked down, you're fine. I don't know how they didn't do that. I think we all kind of know. I don't know what gets you in trouble legality in Michigan. This is a public podcast. I think it's and Alex has talked about the kind of mafia vibes from um, Ward Manual. I think it's pretty clear with this whole prosecutor. Eli Savitt and whatnot. There's something fishy going on. He probably should something fishy. <laughs> that is a Michigan man. He, yeah. he might be a Michigan fan. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. And as much as they can pretend that like this is how things work, I would be asking questions if I was somebody above him because it's like pretty clear. And now like that's just something as a Michigan fan you have to admit is like your team kind of has a pull over the Washington. Washington County Prosecutor's Office, it seems like. Kind of. Optics. I just don't kind want to throw, Alex, I don't want to throw accusations at public yeah, officials. I will. So I'm gonna, they I'm gonna, are. I'm All gonna, public officials in Michigan are corrupt. He is actually. I Thank think, you, Connor. I think he teaches for Michigan law, so he's actually on their payroll. He's a joke. He shouldn't have a job. I feel very comfortable saying that. Potentially, if all that is true, I'm going to keep caveating so I don't it's, get in trouble. <laughs> it's as clear as clear can be. If I ever get pulled over in Washtenaw County, I just want everyone to know I'm saying potentially if this is true. <laughs> Fine. Um, does anyone think if I get a... pulled over? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. If go I ahead. get pulled over in Washtenaw County, I'm just going to say I'm a Michigan football recruit. Don't <laughs> let me go on my way. I'll be fine. Smart. Really, really smart. Again. Um. But that actually ties into your question, Disgusting. Jason, about how do they keep getting away with this is because it seems like they have people in their pockets. I mean, that's very, it seems, it seems like that. If you read between it doesn't the lines. doesn't seem, it's true. They do. They do. Um, Grant will be caveat guy. I will tell you the truth. I like to pull, be a recruit of a team thing. Um I feel like if it was, was there anything else I wanted to say about it? I don't know. I actually am confused. I'm sure you guys may have thought this too. I tweeted it out on our account. Does the Big Ten just not do anything about this? Like, do they just not care? They just, because I think Kevin Warren's a pretty unbiased guy. Um, I, don't... I think Ward Manuel has mafia ties all over. <laughs> so. You think he's got dirt on every human being? Yeah, he's a criminal. Like... He's a mafia boss. He's a criminal. Um, I was curious though, because like, if he cried does, in the during the tunnel incident. Complained, cried, whined. If they think, every single Michigan incident, Grant gets covered up and it's never a big deal. Why are you saying Grant? I'm just saying because you're rep- representing that university right now, um, whether you want to or not. So I have to tell someone. So I'm telling you. I just need Jeff you guys Jackson. To know. I have fully gotten to the point where it's become I just root for the product on the field and find like um the guys I like on the team and root for their success as opposed to like the whole university brand. It helps. I didn't go there. I just, it's kind of like how one of our favorite artists of all time, Morgan Wallen had a very public video saying a very bad thing. And we still love his music. 
You just kind of have to overlook some things when you really like someone and a team. I, I agree with your Wait. point. I'm only just saying that because you cried and got emotional after the tunnel incident. I was up. drunk. So now, <laughs> so now it feels necessary to make sure you understand that you sound like a hypocrite, just like the rest of that university. You can't pull that one because I already apologized for that. That was in the well, movie. apologies don't matter. I can't understand though to not Harbaugh's defense, but I can see why he was so fired up at the press conference because like, I think if we were a coach and you saw videos of your players getting beat up, you'd be mad. So I see why he was mad. I just don't think he needed to loop in the whole justice system part, knowing he had a guy that was going to get popped with the felony gun charge. I also think there's a potential that they might have been told by the prosecuting office and, and police that like, hey, he's going to be good. And it turns out that did not work out the way they thought it was going to do once the whole speeding stuff and like all the ammunition came out. But well, he's a good kid, Grant, so he doesn't he doesn't have to um, follow the rules and get suspended and do all that. And he because he's be. a good kid. He's a he, good guy. He could be. He might just, be. That's a tough thing to use is like, a like I said, spend him for Indiana. Get it done. Because so spend him for the semifinal and then yeah. we'll move on. Well, now that we're at this point, I'm like, I really don't well, want to spend sorry, for TCU. Grant. I really don't. I hand up. I said it. Your prefer- AD and your head coach made it worse. So now he should be suspended for the semifinal game when he could have just been suspended in a meaningless game. I just prefer he gets suspended. I fault. prefer he plays against TCU. Does God, Mazi Smith even like start? Like, is he actually that important to Michigan? Like, I honestly, I, have I think no he's idea. the captain of the defense. Is he actually? Oh, wow. He's really good. He's like, yeah, um, he's, he's important. He's like, I don't want to say anything. Oh, he's like Chris. I was saying Chris Jones on the uh Chris Chiefs. Jones is elite, Grant. For That's college a football. Far stretch. For college football. Like Mozzie Mike. I mean, he's, he's that good. He's like the best D tackle. Only one suspension football. for him, but our players get four for just like playing in the tunnel. <laughs> playing. Some of the guys that got suspended for four games, I mean. Ridiculous. At least they didn't have a loaded yeah. gun with an extendo mag. He was ready, ready too. I mean, that's drive just... through a neighborhood 25 miles over the speed I limit. I think there's bigger problems like gun control in this area. So, what if he was going to a gun range? Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's like gonna 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 they're going to provide the damn gun. No, that's that's like the only bring spin zone in the range. Yeah. Is that, yeah. But like, yeah, what are you, what are you doing? Like, with there all is that, no like, spin zone. Right? Could be going really... to a gun range. Well, there also is no spin zone. To be going 15 to 25. That's also like they said threat to the community. He's not. Like that's also a threat. Let's just not that do is that. reckless driving. Yeah. And then when you combine when you combine it with the gun, that's a one game. That's a one game sussy against Indiana. Go beat the Hoosiers. Need you back for Penn State. That was a huge match at home. Expelled. You can't suspend him for that game. <laughs> you bring him back. Well, now yeah. he'll be suspended for the semifinal. I mean, and then oh, he's just well. suspended. Do you think so? He's fine. I, I think he should he's be clear. I think he's in the clear now. I think he's, he's a Michigan man. He's playing the rest of the way. Oh, yeah, guys. Trust me. Yeah. Ward Mafia boss manual. He'll make sure that nothing happens to his guys. Yeah, no, he's good. It's like Jeff Jackson. He is. Um, I think his court dates tomorrow. It is interesting, <laughs> though. Ryan's an Ohio guy. Like, this wouldn't even be a crime in their state. The speeding would be. Crime wouldn't be in their state. That's interesting. I'm not going to use that as an excuse because if you commit a felony in the state you live in, that should probably be a one-gamer. If I was a head football coach, I'd say, if you commit a felony, at least one game. That'd be my hard and fast rule. <laughs> I think that's pretty fair. Uh, yeah. yeah. And try to do it against so. Indiana. A lot more than one game. <laughs> I'm just kicking them off the team. <laughs> Goddamn right. Let's see you on last chance of you, buddy. <laughs> No, Connor, what, if he's mo- what, if it's, what if it's what if it's Chris Jones though? What if it's Aaron Donald? If it's Aaron Donald, put him in jail. Michigan State basketball looks like they're going to win if they can inbound um, the ball. Aaron Donald. So that's good. That's nice. Not a possibility though. Yeah, um, about this Michigan State game, I'm going to be honest. Penn. St- well, sorry, actually, Grant, you transition us into the next one. No, do you have anything to say about Penn State? They're bad. Penn they State beat- basketball is fun to watch. They just chuck threes. They shoot the a lot whole of threes. entire first half. I mean, they were just. Ball in hand, ball was going to the basket. It was incredible. They shot the lights on to watch uh, my Butler Bulldogs, and they won by six earlier this year in this arena. It was tough to watch. They had a white kid that was mm. just whapping threes off the bench. Um, Michigan having a little problems with everyone leaving to Iowa and potentially their captain quarterback recruiting people to Iowa. It's a little interesting. I don't really know what to think about it. I don't know if any of you guys are. Do you guys like portal drama, or do you guys try to stay away from portal drama? Only portal drama I care about is that – um. Eric All and his dad said that Michigan's a scumbag university. And that That's they what I was about to say. Dirty. I want to hear your thoughts on that, Grant. 
But uh, Eric Hall. I, I think I heard the or saw what happened. This the supposed is, rumor. Yeah, everything's so rumors. I think it had to do with his yeah, back surgery. No yeah. Um, so it's my hard and fast rule that Alex is a repeat for Alex. If someone says I have things to say on Twitter and never says it, I think they're I don't take their word until they actually say what they want to say. So that's how I feel about it. Like, just say what you want to say. We're all big boys. He's like, you guys can't handle the truth. Like, it's the Jim Nicholson movie. No, I mean, you can say whatever you want about about like what happened in your perspective. And we'll do we'll take that information to make our own opinions like grownups. But him just being like, oh, you don't want to know. It's like, OK, I mean, what do you want me to do with that? It was also funny that it was in a reply to Don Thomas on Twitter, so I could make the joke that Eric Hall's dad and Don Thomas are scheming up on Twitter. I'm so scared. Don't get me started on that guy. I saw he's transferring. He's transferring to Iowa. His next chapter for kid, Don Thomas. (laughs) (laughs) Could you imagine? You guys just see the solutions pin block off the backboard. The guy is going crazy in this game, and I think he just needs some pub. Yeah, too bad you called him a fraud. Oh, I'm back. We're back in on the solution. Um, okay, did Evan have anything on that? Yes, no, he, he did. said lead the Alex, charge. please lead the charge in bashing which we the did. hypocrisy of Michigan athletics. But Quote, good, well, he is a good kid. I did mention that. Good, we got that on there. So that's covered. Um, I say we do CFP now. We have Ryan in the house. Evan, we're going to start with Evan Sauce. He came out hot for the CFP. He said the Evan's- playoff... The playoff committee is filled with idiots that contradict themselves every week and every year. Should have been one, Georgia, two, Michigan, three, OSU, four, TCU. Stats back TCU is worse than OSU. Quote, not going to penalize TCU for playing an extra game, but what about USC? Michigan gets the easy path. One seed should be rewarded with the worst team. Hot takes from Evan. Does anyone agree with him? I feel like Ryan might. Um. I just wanted to get in. I'm happy we Ohio State got in. How it lined up is how it lined up. So I can't be mad about not being a three seed. The only thing I'm going to say is I'm tired of people being upset over teams and like feeling bad for teams for losing in their championship game over teams they should beat. It just doesn't make sense to me. And TCU mm-hmm. losing and not dropping in the standing is is weird. I'm going to say it's weird. I have not many teams I've ever lost and not moved in the standing. So might yeah. make sense. Do we think it was more of a case of they didn't oh. feel anyone had earned the right to move above them as opposed to them not dropping? Like everyone just kind of fell off behind them. So I was like, who do we put above them? People would say o- OSU, but I mean, I think the stats are kind of like. It's they also probably felt bad because they put Ohio State in over TCU that one year, and then Ohio State won the national championship, so it was the right decision, but still probably sucked for TCU. And they're like, wow, we can't really screw this team over twice, can we? I mean, no way. They also didn't lose in regulation, so it doesn't really count. Yeah, and the replay screwed them. They actually kind of won that game, and they, they just were like, no, he didn't get across the goal line. So I don't, I didn't have a problem with it. Um, if Evan was on, I'd push back a little. If you look at their wins and their resume, TCU has a win over like number 20 Texas. OSU has a win over Notre Dame's in the 20s, might be 21. Um, and then TCU split with number nine Kansas State with a net result of plus seven points. They beat them by 10, lost to them by three. And then OSU also has a win over PSU, number 11, lost to Michigan, number two by 22. So if you look at the wins, the losses, and the margins, um, TCU split. I I think like you can like I think all of us if those two teams played we're probably all picking Ohio State straight up. I don't know about spread, but we're probably picking Ohio State. I do think TCU could beat them. I don't think it's like a ten times out of ten Ohio State beats TCU. So I'm not going to be like oh TCU didn't deserve three. Like it's way different. But I can see why looking at the resume you just got to take TCU for what they did and let the chips fall where they may. I guess the one advantage they bake into Georgia, they may have not gotten the easier opponent, but they get to play in their backyard. So that's their advantage for being number one. They don't have to go to Arizona. So they get an advantage in one way. Connor. I like seeing the top four teams in the top oh, four. Up, and we don't know if t- what TCU even is. I don't, I haven't seen anything from TCU that makes them in there, but you also can't take that away from them going undefeated. So I'm okay with it. Fair. Uh, so 
obviously, do, do we all think like Tennessee, if they would have beat South Carolina's in? Yeah. Yes. If, if they had handled what their if, business, they would have been in. So what if they're 11 and 1 with Joe Milton? Are they still in? Ooh. No, they'd be like, well, in my book, they're like not even a top 25 team. But mm, okay, we, but you could do it off resume though, or not. Like, I don't know what they would do. It's a good question. They would try we've to keep never them seen out. that with the committee before though, so we like can't like we have absolutely no idea what they I have no idea what they do with that. They would try to keep them out if they could, but I don't think they could in that case because they if it no. means he would have been winning games for them. Yeah. Who was the uh one seed last year? Bama. So it turns out the last Bama. two years, the BCS system would have worked just totally fine. The top two teams were very clear. Um, playoff is all a waste of time. Year. Playoff's not a waste of time, man, if you want expansion. Um, they, either 12 or, or the BCS. I mean, so I'm glad we're going to 12. To Evan's point, too, with the whole conference championship game doesn't matter. I think it, we all know it's a little different with USC because you lost the same team twice and then you got the two losses. They've never put in a two loss team. So although maybe they shouldn't have worded it like that, where like they're not going to get penalized for losing in the conference title game, they should have wor- worded it in a better way where like there are different circumstances. They should just say we take it one circumstance at a time. They cover themselves every time, but they say stupid, hard and fast rules that get them in trouble. Um, but I think we all agree USC after doing what they did against Utah twice. I don't think USC, USC would have got nuked by any of the three teams, four teams that are in. They they stink in the trenches. They're like little TCU? little girls. The TCU would have killed them. Yes, that probably, probably would have been a good right. game. Well, Ohio depends. State? Caleb Williams fully healthy, or the second half Caleb Williams is just like barely alive. Healthy. Well, I'd still take all those four teams over him. Well, obviously him injured, I would take all four of those teams because USC was just a dumpster fire when Caleb Williams can't move. But I would take all four over USC, fully healthy. But Joe Milton's Tennessee team was over USC in the final rankings, which was kind of surprising. I don't care after the top four, I'll be honest. Cam Newton. (laughs) Cam Newton, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady. He is is the next. I mean, if they had Shea Patterson. Um, Ryan, I'll give you a second because since you're on now, we're not going to preview any of the games because it's a long ways from now. We'll preview them the week of, but Ryan, since you're on as an Ohio State fan, your vibe check going into the Georgia game as you sit here today. I'm just excited to be here. Um, I think, I think we have actually something to prove. We have something to prove. We're ready. So I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see us actually go vertical. If maybe we can do that, but I like that go um, vertical for a good game. And I think Ohio State loses. It's gonna be a bad off season. Did you think JSN was coming back? Were your hopes? Yeah, up? yeah. After he tweeted Damn. something, he tweeted something, and then right after we won, he posted that. It would have been cool to watch him and Marvin Harrison in a top four playoff, but. We were out them all season, so got to survive. Yeah, you guys I was, left. If I was, <laughs> if I was a Georgia fan though, and as a Michigan fan speaking, I don't love playing teams that just came off a loss. That's how I felt last year when Georgia lost to Bama. It did not make me feel better. Like, oh, Georgia can be beat. I was like, oh man, they're going to be so mad to play and like prove themselves again and get back to the redemption. You see, Ohio, Ohio State really wants to play Michigan again, I imagine, like bad, and they know Georgia's in the way, so they have that at least to give them some spark maybe in the first half. Um, same with TCU. They're like, oh, everyone's counting us out. They think we're frauds. We got to prove ourselves. So I would much rather TCU be undefeated thinking they were awesome going into this game than having lost. But I think it'll be fun. I'm glad Michigan's the early game. I did not want to stay up again until 8 p.m. if they were going to lose a game. On midnight, you don't want to stay up that late? You don't want to stay up till eight. On New Year's Eve? Yeah, Grant, can you just not be a loser? All right, well played, guys. Bad comment but, um, by me. Uh, Hand up. If, if we were to win against Georgia, I'm already, my butthole is pre-clenched to the <laughs> thought of playing Michigan in the not national championship. That is just a lot on the line for Greg the Rich fan Robert. base. Oh, boy. Yeah, that would eliminate. Wouldn't go on Twitter. If Michigan were to win that game, that I think Ryan, you would agree that eliminates like the 16 year drought that you guys just bullied us. Like I think that just erases it all in one game. Okay, spin yeah. zone though. Do you think if Ohio State beats Michigan, do you think that completely erases the last two years and people just go back to thinking that Ohio State's just the best? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. I figured. 
It has I, to be that way, Grant. It has to be high stakes both sides. This is I how think it works. Uh, I think people would still acknowledge that the rivalry is kind of back on compared to like the last yeah. 20 years it was, but I think the pain of the last years is gone for the Ohio State fans. They're just pure joy that this team rallied and proved they were tough. But I think people will realize like going into the game next year in Ann Arbor, people won't be like, oh, Buckeyes by a million. I think they'll know it's going to be a tough game because these two teams then were in the national championship game. But this is a huge playoff for the Big Ten. The, the Big Ten's whole reputation rides on this playoff, having two teams in. If Georgia does Ohio State and Michigan, Big Ten might just need to fold. Like, yeah. it'd be embarrassing to get dusted by Georgia in both games. Someone has to be. give them a game. Georgia's very good. Georgia's superior to every team, though. So, I mean, it is bad, but at the same no, time. No, guys, they put their bad. pants on the same way we do. Oh, no, no, they don't. They, they, they do Bennett, uh, Stetson Bennett is 25, which is crazy to say out loud, but he is 25 years old. Just bull. I can Aaron see Donald? a Keely Ringo pick six right now in my head. Oh, stop it. Who was the Which guy that was a TCU? Who cares? No, you said, oh, well, you flip flop then. You said you like Michigan by a lot. I do, but just, you know, giving the people some clicks. Connor, that hand is up. I mean, I got, another, I got another question. I mean, looking towards the championship, like this is more towards like people who actually hate Michigan, like Alex, Jason, well, Drew, I well, guess, like anyone who's MSU. Uh, are you are you guys like rooting for a Michigan Ohio State championship? Because I mean, I kind of am because that would be epic. Hell yeah! I don't want to see TCU yeah. Georgia. Like, are we rooting for that big game? I hope Michigan makes it to the national championship and gets dusted. Okay. Thanks, Colby. That, that wasn't my question. I asked if you wanted to see them play Ohio State or Georgia. Uh, Ohio I'm State just gonna give Evans answer. I'm gonna give Evans answer for him. What if you witnessed the Ohio State beating Michigan though? I mean, oh. Michigan being Ohio State. I'm gonna give Evans answer for you. Evan will never route for Michigan to win a football game, basketball game, golf match, cross country, <laughs> track, swimming, doesn't matter. Evan water will ball. never root for them to be successful in any game, any sport. Maybe water anything. polo, maybe water polo. No, nothing. Nothing. So Actually, that answers I mean, your question. What if it no, was no. what if it was Michigan hockey versus Putin's Russian hockey team for our independence? He's not rooting for Michigan. They haven't go Russia. He's not. He but he wouldn't. I've never seen someone so stuck in that way. He would never root for them. He's going to be kicking himself. He missed the Mozzie Smith episode. We might have to give him like five minutes next week if he has any rant. We should. We should let him. We should let him. Um, It's going to be weird to say, but if Ohio State is in the national championship against TCU, I'm going to be pissed. I want blood bad. And like, if we win against TCU, like nothing's going to be said. It's going to be like, well, you know what you didn't do? It's, not going to be fun. I think you can you can celebrate your national championship and get over the fact that you didn't beat Michigan in the same year. That is a weird. That's only an Ohio State fan angle that we get on this podcast because I can assure you, no one else in the country has even entertained an Ohio State versus TCU final. Well, like, because that's think, not happening. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I think it's just a possibility. But it's a good possibility to think of. I didn't. Even, they probably will. But yeah, we didn't beat Michigan. I've already told Wyatt that if Ohio State pulls off a two win. I will cl- declare them easily the best team in college football. There's zero debate. Even if it's like a fluke game against Georgia, you earned it. You beat two teams that are going to be good, you're back. Um, let's get into quickly, if there's any Michigan State portal talk you guys wanted. Drew, I haven't heard from you in a bit. Do you have any guys in the portal that you really want for Michigan State or any positions of need that you guys need? Well, I mean, there's the, the obvious one, but I'm not even going to talk about that because I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. But um, Dante Moore. I think, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> I think it's more important focusing on the, the transfers that we're going to have potentially leaving. Uh-huh. Um, I do think that I do think that we do need to have a quarterback or two transfer out of the program. If you say um, Noah Kim, you can leave. Grant, no one wants Noah Kim, man. Does anyone like Noah Kim here? Sure, I like him. Yes. No. Thorne can. Thorne might need to leave to go to Western. Flander Daddy. Connor. Everyone's out on out on Thorne, except Evan. Yeah. Um, I was a big Peyton Thorne guy at the beginning of the season, but um he just really didn't didn't impress me at all this season. If there's a guy that I think could turn it around though for year three, I think Thorne could do it. He seems he's very tough. He's mentally tough, he's physically tough. I think he could do it. He could like complete the Brian Lewerke cycle where Brian was sweet. That was bad. I think Payne Thorne could turn it around and be good again for a year. 
he just doesn't have like special gifts to be much better than he was last year. He he kind of like tapped out. Like, what is he gonna do? He doesn't have crazy arm talent. He's not super fast. Yeah. He's just he's just okay. He's just okay. He's Sean Clifford. Are any of you guys worried that no um firings or just no relieving of duties have happened on the coaching it's staff? Not gonna. Yes. Tuck needs a very real possibility nobody gets fired. Wow. Tuck needs to be leaving if he doesn't fire either coordinator. Wow. The problem is, guys, um, Jay Johnson brought in Caden Hauser, um, our quarterback of the future. Scotty didn't bring anyone. And Scotty's really turned the defense around the second half of the year. So Jim Leonard for DC. No. He's already not leaving Wisconsin because he, he's not coming to Green Bay, so that's no shot. Oh, the Green Bay pipeline. Correct. Connor's Jim already Leonard? got big ideas up there. Jim Leonard's the head coach at Purdue. Oh, uh, well, now that that opened, that job up, opened yeah, there's today, a possibility. So. I mean, leaving, I guess sense. Jeff Brom did coach at Louisville. Played at Louisville. I still, so if, if he does keep him, then then he's definitely banking on the whole three year rule where he's like, these guys had me, gave me a really good year. Maybe Kenneth Walker was a big part of that, obviously. They've and they had, had three a, years, Grant. they had a bad year. The first year, though, I don't think he's going to. All right, it was good right. last year. Don't count the COVID year. Yeah, I don't either. Worst year in Michigan football that I watched. So yes, COVID <laughs> year did not count as a sport except for Ohio State. I'm sure Ryan acknowledges that they were able to overcome COVID. They won like three games, but made the playoff. Yeah, <laughs> it's a joke. Trey Sermon had like 800 yards rushing in the Big Ten title game. Oh, he's so. I can't believe he never stuck on yet in the NFL. That kid is so he's good. Got cut. It's crazy. He's on the Eagles. All right, fly, Eagles, fly. He'll get a ring, maybe. Huh. Um, well, we beat Clemson that year. That's all that matters. Anything else from the portal? I don't know if it's, it's too early to tell. I was just, yeah. I know everyone gets eager about it. Jason? No, there's huge news. Uh, so a five-star running back, Ruben Owens, just decommitted from Louisville, like maybe two hours ago. Nice. Uh, really? And we were pursuing him heavily, uh, along with a four-star offensive tackle. Uh, also committed to Louisville, and then we got a five-star former defensive tackle from A and M who's visiting this weekend. So that's huge. Someone tried to pronounce his name. I couldn't do it. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. I'm not even gonna give it a shot. No, I have no idea. Uh, Ruben Owens is Johnson. going to uh, not go to Michigan State. So you can you can just shut that one down. Come on, Alex. Let's have fun. Alabama, Ohio State. We, we fed and into Texas the A&M. Dante Moore for too long. That's not over. Still feeding into that. Would you guys let's get a pulse of the room? Would you guys take Dewey DJ Uigalele? No, no, No. he sucks. Start Kate and Hauser for sure. I just want to see what we got. And I'm DJ Uigalele. Ain't gonna do crap at MSU. (laughs) Connor, a realist. Give it to you straight. Um, I don't care about any of the portal quarterbacks. Michigan wise, I got a lineman to build up the trenches again. Um, Arizona State, known for their linemen. It felt good to take a guy from Arizona State for all the guys that we've lost to Arizona State. That's the only thing I took out of that. I was like, wow, feels good. Frankie to Collins. There. And um, Isaiah Todd. And they took another. This is just basketball. Us. Josh Christopher. Josh Christopher. That's who I was thinking Isaiah of. Todd. Not Isaiah Not Todd. Isaiah he went Todd. to the league. He went to the league. Um, But I don't really care about the portal anymore after uh, Braylon Allen said He's staying at Wisconsin, so that's the only kid I cared about in the entire portal. Now that he's at Wisconsin. Did you cry? No, just was sad. I, I got handled bad because I think he may have come, but I think people jumped their guns. It was like he's coming, and then they're like tampering, and then he's like, "I'm staying." People get scared when you leak their info a little. Also, fast. hiring Luke Fickle probably played a huge factor in staying. I mean, I would stay too if Luke Fickle got hired. I think he's a dog, so I think Wisconsin's going to be an absolute wagon in the West for like the next ten years as long as he's there. Overrated. You think Luke Fickle's overrated? You'll see. I've heard in the Mike, West, though, it's not hard to win. I've yeah, heard, he'll win in the West, but I, I've heard Mike Vrabel talk about. I've heard Mike Vrabel sing Luke Fickle's praises, and if there's one person I would trust about coaching, like with not a ton of talent, it'd be Mike Vrabel. I think Luke Fickle is going to be a monster at Wisconsin. I just wonder if Luke Fickle can recruit to Wisconsin. He'll, he'll win a Big Ten championship game in his tenure there for sure. <laughs> I think I think Ted West has never even won a Big Ten championship before. They're gonna he's gonna be the first to win that game. I don't know if it'd be the first. Probably actually 
Nebraska and Wisconsin played against each other in the Big Ten title game once. It was not Big Ten West. It was Leaders Legends. Bam. But I'm just saying there's still two teams from the West played in that game. Mm-hmm. Well, um, the West then. Did Evan have anything? I don't think so. Nope. We are on to said college, Northwestern is his nightmare. College hoops to close out the week. Um, probably feels better now that you guys beat Penn State on the show. Uh, we, did have a li- we did have a listener question that would have hurt worse. Maybe Cormac, you can answer this one. It says, how does it feel having guys named Boo and Cormac give your team an L in the same week? No offense to the name Cormac, though, but that was a listener question that we had. Who wrote that question? They should be... They're all anonymous. In trouble. In trouble. I was going <laughs> to say something much worse. Cormac, what do you think of the name Cormac? You know, it's a great name. Uh Nope. Wrong answer. I think it's a good name. Oh, my bad. I the mean, worst part I think about it is that kid looked pretty similar to you, and you probably acted the same way on the court for your I am I am championship. No, yeah, the you worst know, part I had... about it is his last name's Ryan. Just <laughs> two shitty names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a similar Preach. stat line in my game. It's just it's just a name, dude. You just bucket you a bucket. Yeah, the kid looked like the most privileged perfect family catholic upbringing just loser that that kid sucked everything about him sucked your so celebrations were cringy and terrible your whole speech right now reeks of jealousy no that, that like guy kind of trying to take disgust. a shot at someone well, he didn't do shit in the second half his damage yeah. was done <laughs> he didn't yeah, have to. he had 20 at half that's crazy um, and then Boo Booey, like Evan said, Northwestern. Spartan killer. Whew. Um, and Three years said, in a row. He said the team needs Malik Hall for defense, which I think every, yeah, for sure. They definitely do. But they, they won just need tonight. him back. They won tonight. So that probably, does that bring back the Big Ten champion train? Or did you guys start to hop off that after the last two games? I th- am I going to have to say this every year on this podcast, Grant? Michigan State loses in basketball. Just some of the most atrocious games every single year, and then they end up totally fine. The Bermuda Triangle. Denzel's year, yes, they lose three games in a row, including a 40-point loss to Iowa at home with me in attendance, and then they win the Big Ten. So just it's just this is what we do. Tom loses games on purpose. Makes us tougher. <laughs> I love that. Father? I'm not worried. Uh being at that game on Sunday with Jason, mm, that was the deal. most pathetic thing we have seen, I would think, because seeing the stadium just pour out with still 30 seconds to go was just oh, pathetic. No. Oh, uh, I mean, just surrender Cobra all night. No one could have shot out the worst perimeter defense in college basketball. Seems somehow they fixed it tonight in the second half. Michigan State, you know, after the Kentucky and Villanova win, obviously Villanova looking to be frauds right now, but after those wins, there was hope. The Portland game was, I was calling Portland's a tournament team. Lost that. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, they're they're a November team. <laughs> Number one um, on Ken Palm, I just checked. The best okay. shooting team I've yeah. ever seen. Stats don't matter. Um, but looking towards the Northwestern game, obviously it was going to happen. I think, honestly, most people were expecting a close game, maybe not a loss at home, because your first two games being against Northwestern and Penn State, if you go 0-2, which we were very close to doing, your season's pretty much... I would have ruled the season over tonight. But then, you know, going over in the second half, your next five games are bye games, so you should win them pretty heavily. You have Nebraska at home, and then Michigan's the big game to start the second half of the season. So, I mean, if they can just win these next five commencing with Lee Cole, I think they'll be is that, on track. Is that one against Michigan at Breslin? Uh, Yeah. Right after uh, we have Western an, and Michigan back to back. That's an automatic win. There's no chance. It's Saturday, the the week before we all move in, it'll be rowdy. That is nice. That's a nice little treat back to school. Correct. Um, Michigan yeah, State basketball is alive. Yeah, this was like this is the classic example of like when you're really desperate, you can pull out a game. Like, I th- weren't they underdogs in this game by by yeah, a little bit? First time in Izzo's Three tenure, they've been an underdog at Penn, Penn State. State's not a bad team by any means. They've gotten better under Shrewsbury. This was like a classic. You're desperate. You got to figure it out, and they did. So credit to them. Keeps them alive. If it makes you guys feel better for your Big Ten title hunt, I was looking at the scores, and Illinois lost their first game. Indiana lost their first game. So the guys at the top got off to a slow start. Um, 
trust tree guys are we in the trust tree right now i've uh, never yeah. thought i'd be saying sure. this i'm petrified no. to play zach ed that guy is just gonna Should kill be. everybody i can't believe, believe what he's he, doing he scored like 25 against us last year he's just a ginormous body I don't no know his answer for him. I don't know what I overlooked. I did not have Purdue basketball being eight and zero, number four team in the country on my radar after losing Jay and Ivy. I was like, no, nah, they'll be bad. Nope, they're they gonna the probably better. Be away. They had the better lawyer. Yeah, he's I was fr- just about to say Foster's crazy. He's pretty good. Fletcher or sorry, not Foster. both of Fletcher. them. Fletcher. Both yeah, of them Fletcher. are though. You give no, them both Foster, their luck. Well, Foster can't play. In <laughs> Foster Big Ten. sucks. No, Foster's um, a wagon at Davidson. Fletcher though, Davidson. he's Fletcher's tall. How'd you guys not get in on the lawyer sweepstakes? The Fletcher sweepstakes? Um, they were he was getting recruited when um, Foster was leaving our program because he mm. stunk here. So what do you think? That's like when Michigan lost to Alex Van Summer in sweepstakes. Similar. <laughs> Go ahead, Connor. Is Nebraska a potential, you know, tournament team this year? If you're winning at Creighton top 10, are they going to make like... At least no, like finish the dude. Big Ten, like maybe top twelve. Even is that like a stunner for them finishing top twelve instead of thirteen? Nebraska or pulls a, another stat, and Nebraska pulls some stupid upset every year too that makes no what, sense. What, and then they lose they ever twelve be the games top in a row. Team though on the road, on the road maybe not. Well, well was a, I mean they were down by eight. They're down it's probably like a thirty minute down. drive though to create. Yeah, I mean it's it's a rivalry rivalry game. They play it every wow. every year. If they somehow beat Indiana tonight or play them close, they're probably be ten two already. Yeah, so, but, um, Michigan hoops. I don't know, guys. I don't really. Jalen Llewellyn. I'm not. I'm just out for the out season. For the I'm grasping on the football season as long as I can. The guard play is just going to be even more of a problem. They're going to play Kobe and probably Jet Howard alongside Doug at the point. They don't have any more point guards. They have Doug McDaniel, who's a true freshman, who I love watching play. He's just not there yet. No point guards there yet, honestly, on their team. That's been the big problem with their recruiting and transfer plan. But they've at least been playing the last few games. They played them tough. But you're running out of moral victories because you don't have a signature non-conference win. They need to pull a win against North Carolina out of their butt. Well, they also need to win this week against the Minnesota. You can't lose in the – everyone loses in the barn. you got to pull out a win in the barn. Um, can't lose that game. But I'm not excited about it. Yeah. No, you shouldn't be. They they look pretty bad. Yeah. But they do there's some right spots. I mean, I still I mean, think you're a tournament team. Maybe. I appreciate that, Connor. I don't know yet. The you're depth welcome. could be a problem now. You're never gonna like walk into a game and be like, oh, it's should like it's gonna scare you because they do have they do have a great player in Dickinson and they do have an NBA player as a freshman in Jet Howard, but it's like at some point you gotta really play good defense and be disciplined and like learn how to play together, and they're just not there yet. And they haven't been sneaking out the close ones. So that's really all I have. Um, does anyone have any parting things they'd like to say before we close out? Anything, this is called a random miscellaneous. Uh, Red Wings hockey playoff team? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Maybe. Too early to tell. I mean, third in their uh, side, like the, what the force, they'd be the fourth seed right now in the playoffs. I mean, it's a long season, but they're competing against teams like Tampa and Florida Panthers suck this year. I'll say something, me, me, Connor. I hate that you get to be a Packers fan and a Red Wings fan. That should not be. That's not fair. I mean, actually, I, it is total it. bullshit. Yeah. Why are you a Packers fan? That's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, Red. I haven't even been a fan of hockey long enough where Red Wings have even been good. So. Oh, so recently. But why are you a Packers fan? Pops. Well, hmm. tell Pops you're a Lions fan now. I can't change this far. You know, if I was a Lions fan, I'd be a diehard, but I think that's pretty impossible to change. You, you change from, from Michigan, Michigan to Michigan to yeah. Michigan State. Hell, a lot more reason to change that way than going to a Lions fan. Fun fact, I watched the, um, you know, the, the I think it was Denard when they wore like the Bumblebee striped uniforms. I watched that in the <laughs> basement. It was that's a sad time. Dude, no government names. <laughs> Shoot. I watched it in Connor's wow. basement. <laughs> Bumblebee uniforms, who was that against? Didn't they wear those like against Virginia Tech in the Sugar Bowl? They wore them against Michigan no, State on the, the Michigan road. Michigan State got one bent. <clears throat> Can I say yeah, they got bent? Is that allowed bent. on the show? Uh, uh, all right, that is episode one hundred. Appreciate everybody for joining. So it wasn't just Alex and I. I think we made it through that. Um, I'm not sure a podcast has been attempted with this many people. Uh, we'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm no, just but declaring I think... himself a regular. Maybe I am the new shot. <laughs> in our next uh, 
<laughs> it makes sense. In our next 100 episodes, we'll try to get better at working you guys in as one-offs. Um, but if you guys are ever really passionate about passionate about coming on you can't do it every week connor you can't be like oh i'm really passionate this week every single no, week. i'm busy i'm busy most of sundays anyways so. <laughs> we don't record on sundays or whenever you call on <laughs> um but if you guys are ever passionate about something like is like jason was this week about a topic have you on and we'll kick it around um all right i think that's it follow us on at shut up ms everywhere spotify youtube apple Podcasts, and we will close out with a cheers so episode nine a hundred. Oh my god, I almost missed a hundred. Oh cheers. hundred. Big hockey game this weekend. Also follow at Shot of MS memes. Yes. They do God's yes, work. You should Great do content. That. Great Evan? tweet out tonight. Actually. Follow Scott oh, Bell on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Evan says uh, Evan said uh Evan's cheers was cheers to a hundred and to transfer portal season. Go Red Wings. Um, why would you oh, care about the transfer portal? Fire up Red Wings.